Welcome back to Gemara Journey with Rashi. We are continuing with Sekhar Berachot of Bet Amud Aleph. This will be part three of the Shi'ur. We're going to start the mission from the beginning. You have to be able to incorporate the Rashi yourself because we already did it. And when we start a new piece, we'll start seeing the Rashi's there and then. <coughs> Excuse me. From when does one recite the Shema in the evening? From the time of the Kohanim enter to eat their trumo. Until the end of the first watch, these are the words of Rabbi Lezer. Until midnight. Rabbi Gamliel Omer, Rabbi Gamliel says, Until the pillar of dawn has come up, until then you're allowed to read it. Now, Rabotai, you have to understand, when you learn, pay close attention. In this Mishnah, you have four Tanaim that are speaking. The Tana Kama, Tana little means teacher, Kama means first. We don't know who it is, number one. Then we have Rabbi Lezer. In general, whenever you say Rabbi Lezer, it's Rabbi Lezer ben Hurkunis. Then you have the Chachamim. Then you also have Ramban Gamliel. So on this whole page... That we'll see when as we go along with another, all you're gonna have is this four tanaim. So you have to understand when you learn, you want to be able to get the names down. You want to be able to maybe write on the side, like uh take notes to understand like what's going on. When you write, you remember. When you review, you remember. So we see over here that there is a three we machloket up to when can you recite the Shema, but nobody argues from when you start the Shema over here in the from the Mishnah. <clears throat> Continues the Gemara. Ram Gamil, Ram Gamil says, Ad shalom oh, We did that. Okay. Until the pillar of dawn comes up. There was a story that Ram Gamil's children, they came home from a wedding feast. Amrullah, they said to their father, Look at him, Shema. We didn't recite the Shema. Amrullah, he said back to them, If the pillar of dawn has not yet come up, if it's still dark, you are obligated to go ahead and recite the evening Shema. Two questions, which we're not going to be able to answer over here, only because these questions are for Mishnayot questions. And we did start a new series of the treasures of Mishnayot. We answered these two questions in part three of the treasures of Mishnayot. So if you really want to know it, please refer back to there. So the first question is, why is Ramban Gamliel using Amud Shachar? Why did Ramban Gamliel say Ad Shia uh, Ad Alot Shachar? Why do you have to add? Because remember, watch this. When I'm saying Ad Shia Le Amud Hashachar, three words. He's adding an extra word. Every single word means something. He could have said Ad Alot Shachar until dawn, meaning until when dawn comes up. Why do you have to tell me Ad Shia Le Amud Hashachar? Just tell me. Ad alot hashachar when the morning comes up. Simple. Why do you have to add an extra word? And another question is: Do you know whenever you're dealing, whenever you're dealing with the uh, whenever you're dealing with the tanaim that are speaking in the Mishnah, these tanaim are tanaim. What do I mean? Because whenever you see names inside the Gemara, it's amuraim. Whenever you see names inside the Mishnah, it's tanaim. So when we deal dealing with you with Tanaim, let me ask you a simple question. How could it be that the Tanaim, they came after a wedding, right? It was already after midnight. They come to their father. Let's say it was 3 o'clock in the morning. They come to their father and say, Abba, we didn't recite Shema. So he tells them, you are allowed to recite Shema because you have until dawn. One second. Are we dealing with Tanaim or are we dealing with regular people? If we're dealing with Tanaim, what were the children asking him? Didn't they know that their father holds clearly up until dawn? So why they're asking that question? These two questions are answered in part three in the Treasures of Mishnayot series. It's very rabotai. If you listen to it, I actually even drew it out. What, what does it mean? The pillar of dawn. Why, Ram, why did Ram Gamil's children have to ask him this question? It's very, very beautiful. And uh, it's worth looking into it. Okay. All right, so let's go back inside. So continues the Gemara. The Gemara says, Not only this did they say, Ela rather, 
כל מה שאמרו חכמים עד חצות, אין לי דיבור של חכמים say until midnight, and by the way, when you listen to part 3, you'll understand why it's continuing like this. I don't want to get into it because it's a whole thing, I think it was like 40 minutes in the Mishnah. Okay, let's continue. Not only this did they say, rather anything that the Chachamim say until midnight, the mitzvah is until dawn. Now again, literally means, the literal translation is, until the pillar of dawn has come up. But we're going to just say until dawn, okay? Because it's just, it sounds much more clearer, okay? So, the mitzvah is until dawn. The burning of the fats and the limbs, the mitzvah is until dawn. Comes Rashi, Rashi tells you on the spot, which chalav and ve'evarm are we speaking about? That you are allowed to go ahead and burn them. Which ones? Until dawn. So Rashi tells you on the spot. We're dealing with sacrifices where their blood was thrown or sprinkled during the day. Because you have to remember, Rabotai, there's a whole process in the Beit HaMikdash, how they had step-by-step process. So if they slaughtered an animal, but they didn't get a chance to sprinkle the blood on the Mizbeach, on the altar, then you're not allowed to go ahead and bring the fat and limbs of that animal. So that's what Rashi is telling over here. The burning of the fats and the limbs, only of sacrifices whose blood was sprinkled during the day. And so what does the Mishnah say? What does it mean? Which mitzvah is until dawn? So he says, the mitzvah to bring it onto the altar the whole night. You're allowed to bring on the, you're allowed to bring the fat and the limbs the whole night onto the altar. They only become disqualified if you left it after dawn. That means after dawn. If you still did not burn the limbs and the fats, you are no longer allowed to go ahead and bring it onto the Mizbeach. Now I want to just teach you guys something over here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me, I want to, uh, let me try to show you if I can do this, let me see. Whenever you see this language, if you pay attention in the rush, he says, let me, let me read for you word for word. They do not become disqualified by being left over. When do they become disqualified? Until dawn has come up. Once it passes dawn, then it becomes disqualified. But if you see, it's too much. What am I saying? I'm saying like this. They do not become disqualified. But rather, when do they become disqualified? That's only when dawn has come up. It's too many words in English. In Hebrew, it sounds perfect. In English, too many words. So, what would I usually do? Whenever I see these two words, 99% of the time... Um... I want to teach you guys, uh, just, Rabotai, if you really want to learn, learn, you have to understand that it has to make sense in English also, okay? Because once it makes sense, believe me, it's, for some reason, the, the Lasha Kodesh, it goes like this. Whenever you see the language En and Ela, right, it says En, whatever it's going to say, and then Ela, is two negatives, make it a positive. I'll explain to you what I mean. Or, Lo and Ela. For example, Lo Amru, they didn't say, Ela, rather, when did they say it? So what I usually do is instead of going saying that they didn't say this, but rather, when did they say it? I, rather, I go right away with the positive, like this. When did they say it? You see what I just did? I, I took away the word in. Instead of telling me the negative and then tell me the positive, I go right away with the positive. So let's put it like this. So over here, let me, let's, let's do the Russian. Let's, right, let's do the Russian. Again, but I want to try to help you. Understand how to learn so you guys can learn on your own. Because once you know this, I'm telling you, you can fly with it. 
You open any book, do whatever you want. Rishonim, Achronim, whatever you want, Rabotai. Anything, any, you can learn anything. And I'll just tell you a small story. When Rav Moshe walked in Shlita, my rabbi, when he used to teach us, and he used to go at a very, very, I don't know if anybody knows I used to teach. He used to go at a very, very slow pace. And I'm talking about slow. We could have been on one line two months. <laughs> Hey, again, he would learn Rishonim. He loved it so much, he would repeat it another a hundred times. He didn't care. A lot of people got turned off. They did. They, they walked out. They, they all backed out. What is this? Whatever, Baruch Hashem, we were paying the rabbi. Also at that time, but you have to support the Talmud Chacham, no? And it was good for us, actually. So some of them, I was a shoemaker, so then when I was learning with him, so I would fix his shoes. Somebody was, uh, who, who did the glasses, he would get him the glasses. Somebody took care of his bills. Somebody did. The rabbi was fully taken care of Baruch Hashem. He, he, he is living Sefer Torah. So a lot of people were not really happy with that slow um, pace of learning. So a lot of them did leave. And I'm talking about a lot of them. Do you know that everyone, unfortunately, that I meet today, regret leaving him? Regret. They say, why do we leave him? They thought they're going to leave him and they're going to go somewhere else and they're going to learn much faster. Today, they only know how to daven from a sitter. They won't be able to. They didn't know what's a Rashi toast. They, 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 they couldn't take it. They couldn't sit. Rabotai, patience. Over and over and over again. A person has to come to the next world. Talmudo biyado. Your teachings, your learning has to be in your hand. You have to know it's cold. The only way to know it's cold is when you go over and over and over again. So if you do see in any of my teachings, in any of the, in any of the, because we do Dawud and also Halakha. Okay, the woman Halakha is a little bit easier because I just read it and that's it. I don't go on to explain it. I mean, try to condense it because it's women, they're very busy. So we have Dawud and also Halakha. We have Halakha for women. We have the Ebn Ezra series. Then we also have the Mishtayot, uh, the treasures of Mishtayot. And then we also did, we started Baruch Hashem, Blain Har, Gimor, Journey, um, Gemur journey with Rashi. Rabotai. So if you ever pay attention in all the, the other shu'ur, except the woman's shu'ur, there's a lot of going back and forth, a lot of elaborating. That is the way to learn. That's the way my rabbi taught me. And this is the only way. It's old school style, but that's the only style, Rabotai. If you want to come, if you want to start walking on your own two legs, meaning you want to be able to learn on your own, the only way is pen, paper, highlight, re-listen. Again, and again, and again. You eat Torah, you drink Torah, you sleep with Torah. Everything is Torah. And only then, Rabotai, you'll see you're going to become big time Chacham. Forgot the place was brought down. Tostor says it's impossible that if a person invests time into learning Torah, it's impossible that he's not going to become a Talmud Chacham. Impossible! Oh, you're going to tell Rabbi, we see a lot of people that they're learning Torah, they're investing in Torah, and they're not becoming Talmud Chacham. They're not investing enough. If you really wanted that bad, it would have happened. The question is, do you really want it? Okay. Rabota, let's get back over here. Again, I could have just read it and moved on with it. I'd have to go in to explain it. But I want you, Rabotai, I want you guys to know the stuff cold. And believe me, if you see other people that do the Gemara, I'm not Hassan talking down on them. So I want to compare and contrast. When you go ask them anything about Rashi, well, what? okay, you did the daf, okay. So did you know about the uh, the, uh, the the limbs and the fats? How does it work? When 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 does it get left over? What does this mean? You think they're gonna tell you? <laughs> I saw one time somebody was learning the whatever was learning the more with a rabbi. Said, wow, the ledge was so beautiful. I said, tell me one thing. Just tell me one thing. He's thinking, thinking. I don't know. Tell me one. Just tell me one thing. I don't know. You know why you don't know? Because everything is connected. That's why it's very hard about time when you learn your Torah. And one of the, one of the Tamdi Chachamim that I learned with, by the way, his name is Yosef Zauruf. A lot of you guys probably know him. He does the Zer Shimshim classes. Or I think he stopped doing the Zer Shimshim. I think he does. He has the Sefer. It's called Chatzer Yosef. Correct. And um, you, you'll see. You'll see his name also on Biyachad. He's a dentist, by the way. And we learn with him, Baruch Hashem, at night. And one of the things he said that was good about when you have these recordings is that if the people, they don't understand it, 
They can go back and listen and again and again and again. So Rabotai, the table is set for you to learn. All you got to do is come and learn. That's all. Okay. So let's get back inside of here. We're going to get back into the piece that we're speaking about. And then Ela, Loa, Ela. So let me show to you how different it sounds when I read it the way I'm supposed to read it. Or the, when I change just one word. When I Instead of having two negatives, I make it one positive. Let me show you. Watch this. Let's go back into Dibra Matkhil. Mitzvatan, right? So he says like this. Mitzvatan alot kol alayla. The mitzvah is to bring them up the whole night. Watch this. Watch how I say it. Ve'enan and nifsalim belina. They do not become disqualified. This is the words that I'm saying. They do not become disqualified by being left over. Ad until, meaning, when are they going to become disqualified? Shalem with the shakar. When the dawn is going to come up. So what I just, I said, when they do not, and then I have to go back and say, when they do. So what do I do, Rabotai? What's the usual, how do I come out of the problem? And in English, it sounds much better. I would read it like this. When I start right away with the positive. When do they become disqualified by being left over? That's when dawn has come up. Rabotai. Go back and re-listen. See the way it sounds the first way and the way it sounds now. I took away the law. That's all I did. I took away the word in. I'm basically saying when. That's the finish. I'm making... I don't have to tell you... Two back and forth, it makes it much more simpler. In any event, so hopefully that clears things up. If you guys ever see this type of language, 99% of the time, it's a positive. Okay, so let's get back into the Russian. Mitzvah The mitzvah is to bring the chalam ve'varim unto the mizbeh the whole night. When, <coughs> excuse me, when does the Chalavim and the Evarim, when do, when do they become disqualified? That's only when dawn has come up. Until dawn does not come up, they do not become disqualified. And when is that when they become disqualified? Specifically, in which case? They have to be below the Mizbeach. Meaning, they have to be by the side of the Mizbeach. Again, careful, pay close attention. According to Rashi, because there's an argument... According to Rashi, if you had fats and limbs where you left it by the side of the Mizbech, let's say you wanted to bring it on the altar, you didn't get a chance. Rashi says, now they became disqualified. But what happens if you brought the fats and the limbs onto the Mizbech to be able to burn it? According to Rashi, even if it's already after dawn, they don't become disqualified. You see, Rabotai, how beautiful Rashi is. I got to kiss Rashi one second. Rabotai, this is the beauty of learning Gemara with Rashi. Every detail. Rashi? Mm. Rabotai, wait till you start doing toast. So believe me. Woo. Right, once you do Rashi, Rabotai, uh, believe me, believe me, Rabotai. Get the hang of it. You'll see. Get the hang of it. Don't waste, don't waste, don't waste your time on, I don't want to say on listening time to lectures here and there. It's nice once in a while. It might be nice when you're driving. But otherwise, if you're sitting at home and you're able to write and learn, do not just listen to lecture on Chumash or lecture on this, lecture on, Do not, Rabotai, do not listen. You're not going to grow like that. It's, it's information that's coming in through one ear, coming out the other. It's only information. There's no toil that's involved. Again, it's nice. Do it when you're eating. Do it when you're working out. I don't know. Do it when you're driving. But when you're able to sit, do not listen to that type of Torah because you are able to open up the books. Use go directly to the source. Don't you don't need a middleman. Okay. Rabotai, now that we know this, from where where is it in the Torah written that if you had fats and limbs that which were left over and they were not on top of the misbeh, they were by the side of the misbeh, they become disqualified. When is that? So Rashi, uh, where is it written? So Rashi says, Dikhtiv, like it says in the Pasuk, Lo Yalin. Laboker, you should not leave it until the morning. Where's it brought bro down? It says in parentheses in Shemot and Perik Lamidalad. I want to just see something. Okay. Rabotai, if you look carefully into Rashi, there's a Yud Aleph over there. In Rashi, on the word where it says, and they're below, and, and the fat and the limbs are below the altar. See, there's a small Yud Aleph. I just want to show you something. 
If you want to get a better sugi, if you want to better understand what's going on over there, it's not for nothing that Rashi just brought it. If you, if you really want to have more in-depth understanding, no problem. Look into Mr. Toshas, right? Look over here, like I said before. Mr. Toshas, right over here. Remember, over here we have En Mishpah. This, this is the Halacha section. This is the Shas, wherever it's found in Shas. So if you look into Yud Aleph over here in the Od Yud Aleph, he says, Ein Zivachim, which means look into Masech Zivachim. You have to already know that, that this is Pezayin Amur Aleph. You see over there it says Pezayin and the Dat. That means Zdav Pezayin. Page 87, side 1. Okay, Rabotai, these things, you guys will come across, believe not, and it's nice, because when you're teaching, you could say, it's brought down Masech Baruchot, Dav Bet Amur Aleph, and then it's brought down Masech Zivachim, Dav Pezayin Amur Aleph. You can say, wow, this guy is genius. All right, genius, not genius, but it's right here. Rabotai, everything is in front of you. Okay, all right, all right, let's continue. Now, Rabotai, if we stop right now, we have a very big problem. The way we're understanding Rashi right now, where he says, He says, That we're dealing with sacrifices where their blood was sprinkled during the day, only their fats and their limbs are you allowed to go ahead and bring. Correct? That's the way we understand it. It means all types of karbonot, but that's a problem. Because that's not true. That's why if you pay attention to Rashi, Rashi now wants to go ahead and even elaborate more. And he's going to tell you specifically which um, uh, which carbonate, wh who's, which fats of the carbonate are you allowed to bring up all night and which limbs of the carbonate are you allowed to bring up all night. The, if we stop right now, we're thinking the fats of all carbonate. If we stop right now, we're thinking the, fat, the limbs of all carbonate. That's where Rashi comes and he even clarifies it a little bit more. What is he saying? Chalavim, the fats, so call karbonot. When you're dealing with the fats, we're dealing with the fats that the korban, that the sacrifice whose blood was sprinkled during the day, that fat, uh, but which korban? All types of karbonot, since their blood was sprinkled during the day, you're allowed to bring up their fat on the altar the whole night until dawn. But listen to this. When it comes to evarim, when it comes to the limbs, shel ola. What? If we wouldn't see this right now, you would have thought all limbs you're allowed to bring until dawn. Rashi tells you no, only Ola. What do you mean only? What happens to everything else? So before we continue, let's define what does it mean, Korban Ola. Korban Ola literally means Ola goes up, meaning that the, the whole Korban has to be consumed by fire. Now it doesn't get, they don't put the whole animal on, on the bisbek and they burn it, no. So they would cut the legs and the hands and the body pieces, so they would burn it separately. But the bottom line is, the whole animal has to be consumed, meaning by other karbonot, by other sacrifices, the baalim, the owners of the korban, the kohanim, the ones that do perform the avoda, the service in the Beit HaMikdash, they have a hand in that animal. They could take the leg, they could take the chest, they, they could eat the back, whatever. They have portions from that meat. They could eat it. By an Ola, we don't allow you to have, we don't give it, not to the owner of the animal, not to the Kohanim, nobody has a hand in that. So there we have to get consumed the whole thing. That's what Rashi is telling you specifically only Ola, because that's only there you have when you burn the limbs, because everything else gets consumed by, meaning by other Karbanot, it gets consumed by the owners and the Kohanim. But by Ola, since it doesn't get consumed by anybody, rather everything goes up to Hashem, that's he's telling you that you have the whole night, only by the Korban Olah to bring it onto the altar for it to be consumed by the fire. But once dawn has come up, you're no longer allowed to go ahead and bring up these limbs back onto the altar and sacrifice it to Hashem. Raboy said, do you see the difference? You see that difference? Again, I'm telling you, with me and Rashi, it's like, uh, it's, a different, it's a different world for me. It's a different world. Okay, so, Chalavim Sokol Karbanot, when we're dealing with the fats, we speak about all types of fats you have up until dawn. You're allowed to bring it onto the altar the whole night. But when it comes to Evarim, only Ola, only Korban Ola, only the burnt offering. Why? Because nobody has a hand in that animal. So that's what he says, only the limbs, only of that animal. But Rabota, if it would have been for if it would not have been for that Rashi, I would have thought from the previous Rashi, all other limbs also. Okay. Now. All right, Rabbi, let's continue, let's continue. Baruch Hashem, Hashem, I love you. Okay. 
continues. So let's just go back and we'll go to the next piece. But let's go back one more time. Not only this did they say, Ela rather call Masham Chacham at Chotzer rather what rather any that the Chacham said until midnight. Mitzvatan Asher Amud Hashach. The mitzvah is until dawn. Chetzer Chalam Ve'Evarim. The burning of the fat and the limbs. Mitzvatan Ad Shel Amud Hashach. Already know who, which animal what where. Okay. V'chol Anechalam Liyom Echad. And everything is allowed to be eaten in one day. Mitzvatan. Ad shalei amud shachar. Their mitzvah is only their mitzvah is also until dawn. Now, Rabotai, let's go to Rashi. What does it mean? V'chol an echal nuyim chad. And everything that's allowed to be eaten during the day, meaning during, in in one day, their mitzvah is until amud shachar. So if you look into Rashi, he says v'chol an echal nuyim chad. Everything that's allowed to be eaten in one uh, during the day. Kigon, for example, he says, Khatat, Korban Khatat. We'll explain what each one means below another. Korban Khatat is the sin offering. The Asham, the guilty offering. The Kivse Atarit, the two lambs that were brought on Shuvuot. Uminachot, the meal offering. It was flower based offering. The Toda and the Korban, uh, Korban Toda, a Thanksgiving offering. Rabotai, so we have. Korban Khatat was brought for unintentional sins. You did by accident. You did sins by accident. That's Korban Khatat. Then we had Asham, the guilty offering. You did sins, but you don't know if you have doubt if this was a sin or not. Or if a person misused, consecrated property, or he stole. Korban Asham would atone for that. It would. Mechaper. Kimse Atzer, like we said, it was two male lambs. That were brought on Shavuot. Minachot is a flower-based offering. It's made from flour. Toda is a Thanksgiving offering. What is Thanksgiving offering? A miracle happened. A person came out of Lola and Hashem. He was sick or something happened. Thanksgiving offering. So we see over Rabotai. These five korbanot. That you are allowed to eat them. for in, you're allowed to, You are allowed to eat them in one day. Mitzvatan at Shalom the mitzvah really is until dawn. So Rashi says, Mitzvatan, what does it mean mitzvatan? Zman achilatan, the time for you to be allowed to eat them. Ad she'alei amud ha-shachar, until dawn. Now, Rabbi Tad, do you want to see something? Bechol ha-chalom v'mechad, mitzvatan ad she'alei amud ha-shachar. Also, right, Rabbi Tad, even though the Chami said ad chatzot, so we saw from hech de chalom ve'var, mitzvatan ad she'alei amud ha-shachar, and now he's telling you, even everything that's allowed to be eaten, for one day, the mitzvah, the time of eating it, even extends until dawn and not only until midnight. If you look into Rashi, Rashi says right now, And if he's going to bring it to be left over, because it says in the Korban Toda, You're not allowed to leave this, uh, what, what's going to be consumed, you're not allowed to leave it. Until the morning. Vayikra and Perikzayim. Vikulam miltoda yilmudu. And all of these other karbonot, you're going to learn out from the korban toda. Meaning like this. How do I know when it comes to korban khatat, asham, kifsi, atzeret, and minachot, how do I know I'm not allowed to leave it past dawn? From where am I going to learn it out? Good, you're going to learn it out only from korban toda. The only place in the Torah that speaks about that you're not allowed to leave these karbonot until after dawn, it's only by Korban Toda, by Thanksgiving Korban. From there, you can apply it to, the, to all the other Karbanot. Okay. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, Rabbi. So let me see if I should do more. Let me see. I think we could do the mission. It's a little bit more, it's a little bit more rashi, but I think we should do it. Come. So he said like this. And anything that's allowed to be eaten during the day, their mitzvah is until dawn. And we saw... And the Rashi, Rashi said, what does it mean, mitzv- uh, mitzvatan? Meaning, zman achilatan, the time that you're allowed to eat it, we give it up to dawn. And we said, which time, what does it mean, and everything that's allowed to be eaten during the day, which five korbanot, that we're going to tell you, you could even push it until dawn, was the korban chatat, korban asham, kivsi atzeret, minachot, and toda. Okay. Those were the five korbanot. So now the Gimur asked a question. 
אם כן, אם so, למה אמרו חכמים עד חצות? If what you tell me right now that anything that the חכמים tell us, uh, כל מה ש... whenever the חכמים said that the... whenever the חכמים said that the mitzvah is until midnight, meaning... one second, one second, let me say it again, one second, I apologize. It has to be, it has to be in the floor. You know something? Let's, let's do it from the beginning with those blood. Again, this is why when I have to explain it, it breaks the flow. So let me just go back. And not only this did they say, Eila, rather, in anything where the Chacham is that you only have up until midnight, the Mitzvah is until dawn. I'll bring you proofs. The burning of the fat and the limbs, their Mitzvah is until dawn. And anything that's allowed to be eaten during one day, their Mitzvah is until dawn. If so, if that is the case, that whenever the Chachamim say up to midnight, you really have until dawn, Lama Amru Chachamim Ad Chatzot. So why did the Chachamim tell us until midnight? If I, the, if I have the whole night, why are you limiting me until midnight? The Gemara answers, Kedei Laharchik Adam Min Ha'aver. Rabotai, the first mission of Masech Barachot. Kedei in or Laharchik, to distance, Adam, a person, Min Ha'aver from the sin. Rabotai, the first Mishnah, first Gemara, actually the first Mishnah in the Gemara speaks about the whole reason why the Chachamim made a fence to Kochi, meaning to Korbanot, and to the time of Kriyat Shema. As we'll see right now, they were afraid that stumbling blocks can come out of it. But I want to show you something very important. Look how careful we have to be to make sure that we are fenced if the Chachamim were afraid, Rabotai, they did everything, a lot of Gizero that we see today, everything is because they're making fences. person has to be very careful, Rabotai, Kedei Laarchik Adam in Avera, to distance a person from sin. That's a person has to be careful not to place himself. A person has to try to distance himself from sin, just like the Chachamim made these fences. You should have fences for yourself not to come, Chas Shalom, ever to sin. In any event, Rabotai, we look into Rashi now. He says, Imken, in Dibra Matkil, Imken. Imken, if so, Lama Amr Chacham Yad Chatzot. If so, why did the Chacham Yad Chatzot? Meaning, if, if the mitzvah I can do all night, so why did the Chacham Yad Chatzot up until midnight? So he says, Bikriyat Shema Uba Achilat Kochim. Rashi says, these, this one the Chacham Yad and which two mitzvot did the Chacham Yad say you have until dawn? He says, is by, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, apologies. Let me take that back. One second. One second. But I apologize. One second. So if so, why did the Chacham have to tell you Ad Chatzot by Kriyat Shema and by eating consecrated animals? Consecrated food, basically. But we're dealing with Kabanot. If you pay attention, this is what I wanted to bring out. If you pay attention... In the Mishnah, we spoke about, he brought us three examples. In the Rashi, he speaks about two examples. Let's go back. In the Mishnah, which were the three examples? The Chachamim said, Ad Chatzot. Then we brought, the Mishnah brought another case of, Chakta Chalam Vevarim. Then it brought Achilat Kochim, the eating of consecrated meat. One second. If I have three cases in the Mishnah, why is Rashi telling me, Im Kain, Lama Amrukham at Chatzot? If so, why did Chacham have to tell me you have only until Chatzot by the mitzvah of reading the Shema, the evening Shema, and by the mitzvah of eating the Achilot Kochim? Why did they tell me by those two mitzvot you only have until midnight? What happened to the burning of the fats and the limbs? You also was, that was also brought down. Good Rabotai. You, I just want I want you guys to pay attention to how Rashi is teaching us. That Rashi will answer later on, because that's that. Could, there's no mitzvah for that to be up until mid, midnight. That could actually be whole night, and we'll see why. So if it's the whole night, so why do you bring it here? We're discussing here specifically with mitzvah until midnight, but you have an extension. But the but by the fat and the limbs, it's not up to midnight. You have you lechatchilu. You have till amud shachar, meaning it's always until dawn. But over here by shema and by achilat kochim. They're telling you until midnight, but if you didn't get a chance, you have the whole night. Why? So that Rabotai is going to answer it. So, one more time. If so, 
If so, why did the Chachamim have to tell me at Chatzot Bikri Shema Ubeachil at Koshim? Why did they have to tell me when it comes to saying Shema and eating the consecrated meats? Why did they have to tell me that I only have up to Chatzot if I'm really able to do it even up until dawn? Comes Rashi and explains. So the, like the Gemara said, Kedei Larchik Adam Min Haver. In order to distance a person from sin. Listen how Rashi explains this beautiful piece. About what? 10 lines, maybe 15 lines Rashi. Look how he explains it. Ve'asuram ba'achilu kodom zmanam. Why did the Chachamim have to distance us from sin? So he says, the Chachamim, they forbade you eating the consecrated meat before their time, meaning before dawn, even though you're allowed to. Kedei, in order, shelo yavo lochlan la'achir amudoshachar, in order for you not to come to eat it after dawn, vid chayev karet. And then he would be chayav karet. Rabotai, then he would be, uh, be obligated to be cut off. So you see the first reason why the Chacham have to tell me at chatzot until midnight, if really the mitzvah is until dawn. The Chacham made offense, they were afraid. Even though it's mutar to eat two minutes before, uh, before dawn, you're allowed to. But they were afraid maybe a person is going to make a mistake in the time and he'll eat the meat after the time and he's going to be chayv karet. So the Chachamim went out of their way and they made a fence way, 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 few hours earlier from Chatzot and on you cannot eat it. V'chen by Krishma and so to by Krishma. So one second, if you don't say Krishma, what? You're chayv karet? So why by Krishma? Why don't you give me until dawn? Like Rambam Gamil says. He says, no. Lezarez et hadam. To hasten the person. That the person should be diligent when it comes to Shema. So a person shouldn't say, I have more time, I have more time, right? If you know you have time till 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning, I have more time, I have more time. And through that, the dawn is going to come up. And the time has passed. So over here by Shema, the Chaham were afraid of another problem. The Chaham were afraid that a person is going to say, I have more time. I have more time. So the Chacham say no. Only up until Chatzot. The mitzvah is up until Chatzot. Yes, Rabotai Allah, if you didn't get a chance, you for sure can rely on Rambam Gamliel. I'm not telling you not. But the Chacham had to tell you the mitzvah of Kriyish Shema is until Chatzot because they did not want to take chances with people. They're going to say, I have time, I have time, I have time, and the time is going to pass. Rabotai, this, this mission over here, this Gimor, this, these lines, these Rashis, is a very, very big Musar. Chaskel, why? Chacham were afraid for Shema. My person is saying, I'm going to have time, I'm going to have time, I'm going to have time. How many of us speak, I'm going to have time, I'm going to have time. I'm going to have time, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. You know where Rashi is telling you? If you don't do it now, if you don't set a time for yourself, when it has to get done, Avar Hazman, the time is going to pass. A person's whole life is going to pass, and then when he's going to realize it, it's going to be too late. Rabotai, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Rabotai, first Mishnah. And yet, you have to understand what's really bothering me over here is, I'm not talking about that he's doing a virus. I'm not talking about that he's doing sin. Before Amud shahar I'm allowed to eat. It's permissible for me to eat. It's permissible for me to say Shema. It's just what? The Chacham were afraid that you might make a mistake and eat after. Or the time of Shema is going to pass. So you made a fence. If this is the case where it's permissible, they made a fence. How much more so when we go to places or where we do things which is not permissible and we don't have any fences. We think it's okay. It's not okay, Rabotai. If for permissible, something that was mutar, the Khan were afraid. How much more so we, when it's asur, we have to be afraid. Okay. Rabotai, let's continue. Rashi continues and he says, Vechekter chalavim. Now he's going to explain to you, so why didn't... So, one second. Like we asked the question before. So if we're really dealing with, with Shema and Achilat Koshim, because those are the only two things you are afraid that you're going to transgress or it's going to go over, whatever it's going to be. So you wanted me to do it until Chatot, right? Because over there is Chayv Karet, and you're going to pass the time, fine. So why'd you bring Chayv Chalam Vevarm? If a Chayv Chalam Vevarm has nothing to do, meaning the burning of the fat and the limbs, if it has nothing to do with Chatot, why'd you bring it in over here? So this is what Rashi wants to answer now. Now I want to just show you something. Over here, if you look now into the... In Rashi, you see over there, there's a bed which is bracketed. This bed is basically... You have another place that's called Hagaot Vitrinim. 
It's usually on the bottom right over here. Right over here. So what happens over here is this bed is it's, it comes in it immense. It adds. If something's missing and so on and so forth, it adds. So it's adding over here one word, but you have to go over there, you're gonna see the bolded letters. It says ve'evarim, so you have to read like this. The burning of the fats and the limbs, the katani hacha that was taught in the mission over here. They never spoke about that you're allowed, that you should do it until midnight at all. No, you could do the whole night. So if you could do the whole night, so why did you bring it over here? Velo nakit luhu hacha. Oh, another language. Again, same concept. I put it here, here, right here. Velo nakit. Right here, same. Watch this. Velo and Eli. You're gonna see this. This rush right now. We're gonna see it. Watch this. Watch how I'm gonna read it. Ah. Uh, sh- I could have read like this. And it didn't bring it down over here. But rather, why did it bring it down over here? Bam, bam, bam. So what do I do? I don't go like, I don't say we don't, we, it, it didn't bring, I don't speak about the negative. Just straight to the positive. So I will read like this. Uh, the whole reason why it took the over here, that's, it was just wanted to come to inform you that anything that you're allowed to do during the night, because you're allowed to burn the fat and the limbs during the night, he wanted to tell you, he just wanted to tell you, since you're allowed to do during the night, the first half of the, of the night, you're allowed to do the whole second half of the night. So Rabotai, I want to just make that one more time clear. Again, I could have said, it, it didn't take over here, rather, why did I have to take it? <clears throat> to inform me that whatever you're allowed to do during the night is kosher the whole night. That's one way you could read it. Right? I'm, the way I'm reading it is simple. The whole reason why it took over the burning of the fat and the limbs is to inform you that anything that you're doing during the night is kosher throughout the night. That's why he, this, this halakha he wanted to teach you. Because that's why he wanted to tell you that really the, um, the fat and the limbs, they get burned to the first half of the, of the night. So why do you have to tell me, tell me the shock if it has nothing to do with midnight? It's to teach you. Anytime we give you something to be that is allowed to be done through, uh, during the night, we're telling you you're allowed to go ahead and do the whole night. It's another halakha that he taught you right over here. Continues Raj and he says, and so too is taught like this in the first, in the second chapter in Masech Megillah, Davchav Amud Bed, that's page 20, side 2, Kol Halayla Kosher Likitzirat HaOmer, the whole night, it's kosher, it's a permissible for you to go ahead and harvest the barley. And now he's bringing proof to his words and to go ahead and burn the fat and the limbs. So one more time, Rabotai. Okay, Rabotai, Kitir the Omer, Rabotai, we do that on, that's why I have the Sphere the Omer, that's like a remembrance for it. But uh, the harvesting of the Omer, which is barley, that's also another type of uh, harvest that they used to do. Now, so, she said, Kol Alayla Kosher Likitir Omer. So when they would have to harvest, they would allow you to do the, the whole night, you're allowed to go ahead and you're allowed to cut the barley. Ulehetir Chalam Vevan. Also, it's Kosher the whole night to go ahead and Burn the fats and the limbs. So what did Rashi do? Rashi right now went ahead and he brought you a proof to his words to telling you why did I have to teach you over here the concept of burning the fat and the limbs if it has nothing to do with chatot. He wanted to teach you that since it's kosher the first half of the night, it's kosher throughout the second half of the night. Now, Rabotai, with this we do conclude the mission Baruch Hashem. And if you can see, it's almost three quarters of the Rashi, we finished. Be'ezrat Hashem Belinader. Tomorrow is Friday. Friday is very hard to do the Shu'urim. Because it's a very short day and this it takes time, whatever, because I have to do all the Shu'urim also. But Friday is Belinader, Baruch Hashem. I try to I have other things. I told you I give classes on Gemara, so I have to prepare that. In any event, we're going to continue Belinader, Be'ezrat Hashem. Uh, I hope so, Belinader, the following, the coming up Monday. Because Shabbat, you cannot do it. Yom Rishon Sunday, it's uh, almost, it's not really but uh, feasible, so Belinada will continue. So I'm saying if you don't see that it, get, it doesn't get posted, you should understand why. 
You have to understand when I, the Gemara classes and the Halakha class, all the other classes, four classes of uh, basically it's not it's five classes. So let me just clarify this, Rabbi We have Halakha for women. Baruch Hashem, we have Dawud Amos Halakha, Evna Ezer, the treasures of Mishnayot, and Gemara journey with Rashi. So these five classes get posted every single day only from Monday to Thursday. So you guys have to know. Just, I'm just letting you guys, I'm just informing you that if you ever want to know, if it's up, not up, you should know that if you don't see it up because that's the only days I do it. So you, you'll see it Rabotai. in those four days, you'll always see Bizarat Nether, new lectures posted unless otherwise I will tell you. But before we do conclude, let's run through the Mishnah now that we have all the Rashis. For the Mishnah, let's run through the Mishnah with ease. And I'm telling you, when you learn it well, this daf, this, not daf, this, uh, the daf you could also say, this Amr, when you learn it good, it shouldn't take you more than two minutes. You guys might be laughing, but that's the Amr. When you learn it with the Rashi, when you know it cold, you know it cold. Because remember, I'm, what I'm doing now, I am reading it, and I have to translate and explaining. That it takes time, which is not, not a problem. I'm happy to do it. But when you're going to have to do it yourself, you're not explaining it. It's automatically already programmed in your mind. It's already subconscious. It's there. So let's, Rabotai, let's see this. Let's, you know something? Let's see this one second. Uh, okay. You know, let's see how long it's going to take us to do Mishnah, from the Mishnah till the, till the Gemara. Let's see how fast it's going to take us. I'm just looking at the time. The seconds. Okay, let me see. One second. Let, let it get, let, okay. All right, here we go. Me'ematai korin eshma be'aravin. From when does one recite the Shema in the evening? From the time when the Kamonim enter to read the Trum Atzo and Ashma return to the Rabbi Lezer until the end of the first watch. These are the words of Rabbi Lezer. The Chacham Yomri, the Chacham say Ad Chatzot until midnight. Rabbi Gamil Omer, Rabbi Gamil says Ad the Shalem with the Shachar until dawn. Maseu, but I'm reading the Mishnah. There was a story with Rabbi Gamil's children. They came from a wedding feast. Amrulo, they said to him, Lo Kari the Shema. We did not recite the Shema. Amlehem, he said to them, Im Lo Alam the Shachar Chayim Atem the Kroat. If dawn has not come up yet, you are obligated to recite. The evening Shema. Not only this did the Chachamim say, but rather, whenever the Chachamim said that the Mitzvah is until midnight, Mitzvatan Ashi Alam Mutashachar, really the Mitzvah is until dawn. What are proved? Hefti Chachamim Levar Mitzvatan Ashi Alam Mutashachar. The burning of the fats and the limbs, the Mitzvah is until dawn. V'chol Anechal Mu Yom Echad, Mitzvatan Ashi Alam Mutashachar. And anything that's allowed to be eaten during the day, the Mitzvah is until dawn. Im Ken, if so, if the Mitzvah is real until dawn, so why did the Chachamim have to tell me why did they have to limit me until midnight? Lama Amrucham at Chatzot. So why did Chacham have to tell me at Chatzot? Kidei l'archik Adam min harera in order to go ahead and distance a person from sin. Rabotai, 12 seconds exactly. The Mishnah we just did. In any event, Rabotai, enjoy it, love it. Review it. Bezrat Hashem, Kach Baruch Hu, give you guys Siyad Shemaya in learning and understanding and being able to also one day, Bezrat Hashem, spread the Torah. Have a great day.